Mit wie vielen Gemeinden dann mit Iran? Das Lenny? 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 Good morning, everyone. How was your day yesterday? Was it good? Yeah. Did you learn? Awesome. Did you learn a lot? <coughs> Great. Do you still know what you learned yesterday? Do you, have you still have it in mind? OK, perfect. Um, I just want to add a short, uh, just a short notice for you. We are looking for new tutors. So if you're interested in, in joining Shilop Solo for You, please go to our website, graz.sono4u.at, and you can apply until the 31st of October. Um, in order to repeat um, yesterday's program, I'm really happy to welcome my colleagues, Elena, Romeo, and Martin, who will now do a short repetition on the EFAS protocol. Please welcome them. Good morning, everybody here in Graz. Good morning also, everybody in Aachen, Mannheim, Berlin, Bonn, Zurich, Innsbruck, and whatever, where people are watching the live stream and listening to us today. My name is Romeo Riedler. I'm part of the sono for You Graz team. And I'm quite a romantic person. So, as yesterday, the topic was trauma. The EFAS protocol was a major topic, a major content, and actually I think the EFAS, it's kind of romantic. You don't believe me? I will convince you. I will convince you. So the EFAS protocol, the extended focus assessment with sonography in trauma. The name already says what we use it for. It already describes the indications. We use it in a trauma case, whether it's blunt or penetrating. And what are we looking for? We check the peritoneum for liquid, we check the pericard for liquid, and we also scan the lungs for a pneumothorax. So, which, which sections exactly did we have in the EFAS protocol? Help me. You remember some sections? Just shout out. Morrison pouch. Morrison pouch. Color pouch. Exactly, color pouch. Pelvic area. Pelvic area. Subcipital for chamber view. And we extend the protocol also with the lung scan. So we have the right flank, left flank, subcipital view of the heart, suprapubic view of the pelvic and we scan the, both of the lungs. It's very important. Well, now about the romance. As we take the probe and we put it about three fingers above the lower rib bow at the right side, we look into the window. We look into the window of a hotel and it's the Hotel Morrison. So what do we see inside of this hotel room? Oh, we see a couple lying there. And they are a very, very close couple. It's the liver and the kidney. So between them there is a slight spot and it's the Morrison pouch. And I can tell you, the liver and the kidney, they really don't want anybody or anything to get between them. So, as in every relationship, sometimes there is trauma. And in this case, a black, flexible in shape, mostly sharply etched st structure can appear in between of them to be pre precisely an anechoic structure. And if we have, with a view of the sound beams, an anechoic structure, what do we think of? What do we think of? Liquid, of course, and in a trauma it may be blood. Well, to find this liquid, sometimes it's not very easy. So we have to scan through every time from ventral to dorsal. 
the Morrison pouch. And it's very important also to check the tip of the liver because that's the first spot we'd have the liquid at or our anechoic structure. So in our couple, the liver and the kidney, we have a male part and we have a female part. Who do you think is the female part? Come on, it's an easy question. It's the liver, of course, because the liver, it always likes to look into the mirror. <laughs> it likes to have a mirror image. And we have a very nice mirror with a beautiful frame. It's built by the diaphragm or the diaphragm, as we are pointed in the picture. And can we? Yeah, we see the diaphragm, we see the mirror, and we see the mirror picture also here very well. And sometimes this mirror is broken, which is a pity. It's broken when we have some liquid behind in the costodiaphragmatic recesses. So we have an anechoic structure there. And as our echo beam view is penetrating very well through liquids, we would also see the structure behind. And in the right quadrant, the most dorsal structure is the spine. So we call this the spine sign. Okay, Whew, enough for this hotel room. So let's go on and directly left to the Hotel Morrison, we have the Collar Hotel. And to find, to find the window of the Collar, Collar Hotel, we'd like to check the probe handling shortly. Because at the left side, you need to go more cranial and more dorsal, if we can demonstrate that. And sometimes you, and actually you also need to spin the probe a little bit clockwise to find your way between the ribs. I think everybody could practice yesterday. And as we look through the window of the Collar Hotel now, we again see a couple. And again, it's very close to each other. And between them, there is a little spot. It's the collar pouch. Also there, if we scan through very precisely from ventral to dorsal, sometimes we'd find an anechoic structure if there is trauma in the relationship. And there is also a difference in this scan. Because we have a different protagonist, it's the spleen. It's also the female part in the relationship. She likes to look into the mirror. There is also the spine sign, and which can occur. And she's a very hot-tempered mood, a very hot-tempered person. She's highly vasculated, so she can have bleedings. And that's why it's important also to scan through the spleen from ventral to dorsal and to check the capsula if it's if it's still continuous or if it's ruptured. And we also have a look at the subphrenic view, which is above, because also there we could find this anechoic structure, which is liquid. Okay, so for the next couple I want to present you, you must know this one is the most romantic couple, because they are so close to each other. You could say they're even inside each other. Of course, it's the heart and the pericardium. So to have a look into the window of the central hotel, we also check the probe handling. As yesterday you heard from Aidan Barron, we pop, slide and scoop. So we put the probe directly under the xaphoid processors we press on the epigastric area and we point the top upwards, which gives us a beautiful image of the heart. And there she is with her left and right ventricle and her left and right atrium, dancing her beautiful dance. It's no wonder she's surrounded by Mr. Pericard. And also there sometimes, in between of them, we can find a slimmer or wider circumferencing anechoic structure, which again would be liquid. And we will hear more about that 
in today's program. So, I will step back from the window of the central hotel and by talking about all these love couples, I feel a little bit hot, don't you? So, whew, let's have a little refreshment. I suggest we have a walk and we go to the local tavern in downtown. So, on the way there, we pass by the Douglas store and there we meet our friend Eleanor. And the location of the Douglas store we describe with the anatomic term the recto uterine recesses, which means the pouch between the rectum and the utero. And there it's important to check the height. Okay, we'll check the height and as we finally arrive in the tavern of our desire, we meet a good friend, which is Martin, and we have a little refreshment with him. So we order a glass of beer and we cheer together. And we, as we are in Graz, in Austria, we cheer with the German word, which is Prost. So it's about the Prost pouch, you can imagine. And this is the pouch you would find in the pelvic in the man. The anatomic term is the rectovesical recesses, and so it's between the rectum and the bladder. And as we feel very well and very comfortable in this tavern, we'll have a good look around in the longitudinal and also in the cross-sectional axis here to find any liquid in the Proust pouch or in the Douglas pouch. So, in the longitudinal view, I'd like Martin to show us how deep the Douglas pouch is going because it's still peritoneal. So you could imagine it's not going that far behind. Okay. Well, after this little break, after this refreshment, let's go back or let's say let's extend our romance. And I want to tell you the story of an old couple. It's the parietal and the visceral pleura. Day for day, all their life, they've been loyally being next to each other, sliding along, sliding along, and behind, in the lung, you wouldn't see a lot at first because it's filled with gas. Maybe you see some horizontal hyperacogenic A lines, but they are physiologically because they are reverberational artifacts. And yesterday we also heard that in the case of an edema, we would see some uh, vertical hyperechoic lines, which are B lines, but we don't have them here. We have a healthy lung and we see the pleura parietalis and visceralis <coughs> gliding along. And sometimes our couple is in the memory mode, which actually we call the motion mode. It's the M button on the machine. But in this case, it's the memory mode because they think back to their honeymoon, which was years ago. They think about the beach, the waves, and the horizon. Oh, can you see it? It's the sandy beach and wave sign, or the seashore sign, as you prefer. And if Elena now stops breathing, and we make a scan in the M mode, if you keep the air, okay, we see some straighter lines, and we are trying to fake now what it looks like when you have a pneumothorax. Still, we see some movements, which is the lung pulse, because we don't have a pneumothorax, but that's coming close to what we would see. For me, it looks like a barcode, and that's why we call it the barcode sign. Okay, but let's go back to the beach and finish our presentation in romance. On the machine, Martin Heidinger and Elena Salomon, thank you very much for your attention.
Thank you very much, guys, for your repetition. It was awesome. Romeo, you're a really romantic guy. Thank you. So, today's subject... No, we're doing a break, right? I'm sorry, we're doing a break now. Until 9.30, and then we will continue with our next lecture. So please be back by 9.30. Thank you.